In today's video, you're gonna learn how to make the popular clay look inside of Cinema 4D. Don't miss this one. Hey everybody, it's Nick here again from grayscalegorilla.com, bringing you the tools, training, and tutorials to help make you a better motion designer. Now today, I wanna to show you how to make that clay look inside of Cinema 4D, but before we get started, I wanted to make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel, where we have tons more tutorials just like this on YouTube, not only from the past, but coming very soon. If you're looking to learn Cinema 4D, this is your place. Also, we have an intro to Cinema 4D series over on the website if you've wanted over 30 hours of comprehensive Cinema 4D training please check down below for the link and I'll try to link it up here on YouTube as well all right let's get started with today's tutorial so today's video is all about making this clay look in Cinema 4D now this is a really popular look in production when you want to show a work in progress of a model or your scene but you don't have the final lighting or the final texturing ready to go the other advantage of this style is that it renders very quick. So if you ever, ever wanted to send a work in progress, this is the look for you. It's definitely a production technique you wanna have in your back pocket if somebody asks for it. Or again, if you just wanna send a quick work in progress and not have clients giving you feedback about things that are not finished yet. So with that, let's head on into today's tutorial and let's get started. Whenever you're looking at an image that you want to try to figure out how they did it, you have to look at a lot of different things. So we have our texture. What is our texture saying? Well, our texture isn't very reflection reflective. And uh, it's kind of what they call a clay uh, texture. And this is kind of what a lot of modelers do to get an idea of what their model looks like uh, without worrying about the lighting. So in the same way that I kind of try to focus on lighting and, and texturing, um, and, and I frankly hate modeling and I can't do it and I'm not interested in it. There are, there are a lot of modelers that are awesome at modeling and could kind of care less about the, the texturing and, and lighting and whatever else, right? So what a lot of modelers do is they do this. They have this kind of clay look and they add ambient occlusion to it and maybe a basic shadow light and call it a day, and this way you get to see their model as it is. The other thing, um, again, that's not all modelers, but a lot of modelers kind of have this, you know, like let's see it in clay kind of feel. Um, the other thing to look at is the camera angle and the camera, um, the, 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 if it's a wide angle or a telephoto lens, right? The millimeter of the lens. And one thing you can notice is it's not a it's not a wide angle lens. This is actually zoomed in and that's because there's almost no perspective. The distance between here and here is almost the same as from here to here visually. And that means we're kind of far away from this object and we're zooming in. So those are all those things can come together to allow us to try to recreate something like that. And to do that, I'm gonna go, uh, Basically, find a, let's see here, um, bu -bu -bu -bu. another kind of model or something to play with. You know, we should have like, um, I should have like some default models I could go to. I, I he keep, hate to keep grabbing those things, but we need some detail, right? Um, so let's go to, uh, not, let's see if Prime has anything, because then... Um, we can cogwheel objects, humans, clutches, gears, ratchets. Ooh, gears. Gears might look kind of cool. Let's uh, let's go jump back into. Uh, I think there's actually a skateboard. Brick share. Blah, 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 blah. Broadcast. 3D objects. I want to say sports. Baseball. Blah 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 blah. Basketball. Tennis racket. Skateboard. Ding 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 ding. Sweet. All right. So this will give us our rough idea of the angle and everything. There's not as much detail on this skateboard, so let's add uh, a little bit of detail to it. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is we have this clay render. So we can actually just grab all of our textures and delete them, right? We could do the same with, uh, with the trucks. We can come in here and turn off all the textures. But in this case, maybe it wouldn't take that long to go delete all these textures, but there's a better way to do this. We can grab a texture throw it on the top of the skateboard and then I think we right click on it and we say select identical child tags 
And that's going to go down through this entire skateboard hierarchy and find all of the textures. And now I could hit delete. And now we have basically our, our plain skateboard. Uh, and we could just leave it like this. There's enough detail at the bottom that we could set up a clay render. Um, so now when we hit render, it, we're just going to get, you know, this, this basic kind of, you know, standard Cinema 4D thing. But this standard Cinema 4D thing is, is, is different than this. This looks a lot nicer to me um, and takes a little bit more work than just this flat Cinema 4D flat render. So the first thing is we need a back backdrop. Now we can add a gradient um, to our backgrounds. And so we can create a new material and we can say add a backgrounds add a add a uh, a texture and in this texture I'm going to open it up I'm going to say luminance I'm going to turn off everything else and I'm going to go to gradient so now here I'm going to say uh, give us a circle gradient and that's going to go from white in the center to kind of off white on the edges and maybe that's just done in post with a vignette but that's what I'm seeing in this render brighter in the center a little bit darker on the edges not much that might even be too much uh, the other thing I want to make sure is that we're in 16 by 9. Uh, I should probably just set up a new .c4d in this in this file. Um, but let's go ahead and set that up. Let's also set up our picture viewer so it's a little bit smaller. It looks like 500 or so is about the right size. So it rendered kind of in the scene here. Perfect. Okay. So that's our base setup. But our default lens, you can see, is too wide of an angle. You can see... Things that are closer to the lens appear closer, and things that are farther farther away have that parallax, have that distance, and uh, we have we have too much uh, too much wide angle on this default lens. So let's grab a lens, and uh, like the last one, let's grab something like a hundred or even one eighty. I don't know. Let's really you know, get rid of all of the perspective out of this lens. So now you can see we're getting something more like this, right? We're, we're, we're seeing um, kind of no perspective from here to here. Uh, there, com so compare that, and I have a video on Grayscale Gorilla about this, uh, about the millimeter and the angle of lenses and what they mean, but compare that to a 20 millimeter lens at the same angle, and now you can start to see that there's perspective. This is much closer and wider, and this is further away. And if we jump between these, you can see it kind of stretches that out, right? So we're flattening out our object. Let's delete our wide angle. And let's start talking about the clay uh, material. So let's just grab a plain material, add it to the skateboard, and hit render and see what we got. First of all, um, we have shadows. This default light is broadcasting from the front of our camera and it's barfing it out which means we get a little bit of shadow here we're going to get weird little shadows and highlights um, all these specular hits and stuff also uh, are are really not a part of a clay shader so just go coming in, into reflectance or if you're in 15 or earlier into your specular and just delete it and that'll go a long way to get rid of that specular hit but it's still not still not what we see over there so how do we do that well we could do something like this add luminance and turn it down and now we have a very flat clay render but now we have zero shadows so how do we do that how do we fix that well from here we can go to our render settings we could add ambient occlusion and just do a render and see what we got this is approaching what we have right um so this if we compare it to here it's pretty close our background's a little bit bright we can we can die um bring this down uh, our gradient, we can just pick more of like a mid gray, kind of match it, match it a little bit. All right, that's looking okay. And uh, let's do a quick render, see what we got. So uh, better, better, much better. So now we have our little details are popping out onto our skateboard. And uh, in fact, if we look at the bottom of this board, um, instead of the top, we'll see a little bit more detail and we'll be able to um, kind of judge all of the uh, ambient occlusion settings and everything. So let's see what we got. Cool. So all the details are popping up. We probably can turn up our settings a little bit to get a little bit cleaner, um, a little bit cleaner there. And in fact, just to get kind of both sides of our, our texture, I'm just going to make a copy of our skateboard and kind of just drop it at the bottom. So now we're seeing kind of 
top and bottom. I'm just cheating this to get a little bit more detail into this model. And so we can see what's really going on. Cool, clay model. Now, the last thing we're missing are shadows. So you can see this model actually does have a little bit of, um, of shadows coming in kind of from over here. The shadows are coming in kind of from up and to the right and they're coming down and they're making all these nice little shadows, but they're not very hard shadows. They're just adding a little bit of, of sunlight almost, right? So how do we do that? Um, well, we can grab a, an infinite light and grab our infinite light and then position it the way we want. So it, right now it's aiming kind of straight this way. We can aim it this way kind of 90 degrees to the to the skateboard and then angle it down. And you can also tell it's a little bit warmer light. This is a little bit warmer and then all this other stuff is a little bit cooler. So it's just a little bit of a hint of, of color on this. So it's basically a clay render with a subtle shadow. So we could add a little bit of warmth to our light and let's add um, a hard shadow and see where we're sitting with this. See what this does. So here comes our light and what happens? Nothing happens. The reason nothing happens is because our texture is all luminance. There is no room for it to capture any light. It's all, it is a light, right? It's not gonna capture shadow if it's all just built with light. So the way to, to kind of cheat this is to turn down our luminance, turn on our color, and then just tone down the color of our color or tone down the brightness of our color, do another render. And now we're gonna balance the luminant material with the color to grab some shadows. And there we go. So now we're, we have some shadows. These hard shadows are awful. Um, they render very quickly, but let's do area shadows just to get a little bit nicer shadow there. It will fall off a little bit more naturally and of course render a little bit slower, but that's, that's not bad. Um, let's angle it a little bit off center just so it's not perfectly centered and maybe have a little bit longer shadows. So there we go. And now we're rendering much better. So this is a little bit grainy on my end. What I would do from here is either turn up the anti-aliasing. I would uh, turn up the ambient occlusion samples um, if you're using the standard render, or if you have physical, I would go to physical and uh, adjust here similar to how we did before. So let's just do a, uh, a high, um, a high, uh, what do you, what do you a high res render there. Uh, still not enough. Uh, I would say what we should do, ambient occlusion, the settings are off. Let's just crank it. What's nice about these settings is this gets set just by you setting this other number. So let's just see how long this takes. It shouldn't take very long, but we should get a really smooth look. Beautiful. We have our shadows, we have our details, we have our wheels. All this is built with a very simple light, ambient occlusion, and you're ready to go. So there you go. That's uh, roughly how you do this kind of like clay render look in cinema using some basic materials. Thanks again for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. And if you want more Cinema 4D tips and tricks, please subscribe to our YouTube page. And also, if you're just getting started with Cinema 4D, make sure to check out our Intro to Cinema 4D series. I'm gonna have a link down below in the description and also link it up here on YouTube as well. Okay, with that, I wanted to thank you once again for joining us. I hope you're having fun with all this stuff and keep rendering. I'll see you in another video real soon. Bye everybody. It just got hot in here. Ooh, man, the heat turned on, they got the lights. Boo. I'm not joking, dude. It is 80 while I was recording these intros. I need a beer.